A colloquialism is an informal phrase used in everyday conversation. In this video, I'm going to talk about two colloquialisms, both connected to animals we keep as pets. Hair of the dog is one of the phrases, and letting the cat out of the bag is the other. Of course, the present day usage of these phrases has nothing to do with the actual animals. Stay tuned for the stories behind the colloquialisms, along with examples of how to use them in sentences. But first, do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you. Say you've been bitten by a rabid dog on the street. You're infected with rabies, a deadly disease. So you go back to the afflicted dog to get a hair from it, probably getting bitten again in the process. Then you apply that hair to your wounds. In the olden days, this procedure was believed to be a cure for dog bites and rabies. Let me categorically say that this so-called cure is a sham. It does not work. If a rabid dog has bitten you, speak to your doctor about getting an anti-rabies shot right away. If you have no way of checking whether the dog is infected, check with your doctor if you should take the injection anyway, because rabies is fatal. The present day usage of hair of the dog does not refer to dogs or rabies though. It has more to do with the hangover you get from drinking too much alcohol. When you take a small drink the morning after a night of heavy drinking, it's called the hair of the dog. It may give you some temporary relief from the symptoms of alcohol poisoning that you're experiencing. Interestingly, the earliest documented use of the phrase is in this figurative sense. It is found in the 1546 text, a dialogue containing the number in effect of all the proverbs in the English tongue. I pray thee let me and my fellow have a hair of the dog that bit us last night. And bitten were we both, the brain aright. We saw each other drunk in the good ale glass. The reference here is clearly to alcohol and not dog bites. The book was written by John Haywood, an English writer known for his plays, poems and collections of proverbs. The first reference to the literal use of the hair of the dog to cure bite wounds appears more than two centuries later in 1760. English physician Robert James writes about it in a treatise on canine madness. The hair of the dog that gave the wound is advised as an application to the part injured. But even so far back, a time when there were strange beliefs about medical treatments, James was skeptical about this particular cure. Hair of the dog is an unusual case where we find examples of its figurative use in the sense of a hangover remedy much before we come across its literal use. One more century on, in 1898, we find both the literal and figurative use explained in the Dictionary of Phrase and Fable by the clergyman, school teacher, and lexicographer Ebenezer Cobham Brewer. In Scotland, it is a popular belief that a few hairs of the dog that bit you applied to the wound will prevent evil consequences. Applied to drinks, it means if overnight you've indulged too freely, take a glass of the same wine within 24 hours to soothe the nerves. If this dog do you bite soon as out of your bed, take a hair of the tail the next day. Mansi didn't look surprised at her surprise birthday party. The caterer had let the cat out of the bag when he called for directions. Shujoy was beaming. The HR head had let the cat out of the bag about his upcoming promotion. He confided in me about his affair, but I let the cat out of the bag. He's furious with me. To let the cat out of the bag is to disclose a secret either deliberately or inadvertently. The origin of the idiom is not clear. There are two theories. One which dates back to the Middle Ages is about substituting a cat for a piglet at the market. It's related to the phrase, a pig in a poke. A poke is an old fashioned term for a bag. The idiom refers to something, a suckling pig, for example, that is bought without being properly seen or inspected. So if a shady livestock seller put a cat in a bag instead of a piglet, the scam would be revealed only when the buyer went home and let the cat out of the bag. The only problem with this theory is that a cat is much lighter than a pig, even a small pig. There is a similar saying in Spanish, dar gato 
por liebre. That means to give a cat instead of a hare. It's used in the context of being scammed by a vendor who has passed something cheap off in place of something more valuable. Note that the hair in the hair of the dog is spelled H-A-I-R. But in this Spanish phrase, we are talking about a hair spelled H-A-R-E, meaning the mammal that resembles a rabbit. This idiom has an interesting history. It came out of 16th and 17th century Spain when people used to go on long journeys on foot or horseback. Travelling by day, they would stay the night at posadas or inns. The innkeepers would sometimes serve these travellers cat meat in place of hair, because the latter was much more expensive. In fact, the scam was so common that travellers would utter an incantation before their meal. Si eres cabrito, mantente frito. Si eres gato, salta al plato. If your goat meat, stay fried. If your cat meat, jump on the plate. Given that a cat has nine lives, perhaps it could actually come alive even after being cooked and give the wily innkeeper away. The other theory about letting the cat out of the bag is linked to the nine-tailed whip called a cat o' nine tails which was used in the British Royal Navy to flog errant sailors. Apparently, the whip was stored in a red sack. And so a sailor who revealed the wrongdoings of another would be letting the cat out of the bag cat being short for cat and nine tails, as in the cat or whip would be removed from the bag to whip the sailor with. But just as in the case of the marketplace camp, this story too is not backed by proof. The oldest reference to the phrase in print is from a 1760 book review in the London magazine. The reviewer wished that the author had not let the cat out of the bag, a sort of old style spoiler alert. It's an interesting coincidence that 1760 is the year that marks both the first use of letting the cat out of the bag and the literal use of hair of the dog. This first record of the feline phrase, however, gives us no clue about the authentic origin of the phrase. My own totally unfounded theory is that English people who knew little Spanish heard the phrase Vargato por liebre and mistook the word liebre, which means hair, to be libre, which means free, and mistranslated the phrase to mean freeing the cat that was in the bag, and thus the English saying came into being. But let me stress that this is a totally unfounded theory. I threw it in just for fun, don't take it seriously. So those were the two colloquialisms I wanted to talk about today. I hope they spice up your English. Do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube. Click on the bell icon too so you're notified as soon as I come out with a new video. I'm The English Nut. Bye for now.